Welcome to my third video on reinforced concrete design. As usual, this is the textbook used in this lesson. Today's topic is on the shrinkage of concrete. There are three types of shrinkages. The first is caused by the loss of water content in concrete mix. The second is caused by difference in temperature. And the third is the reduction of volume as the concrete sets. This book does not provide a clear demarcation among the three types, but in this video, I'm going to do it. Let us start by looking into concrete shrinkage caused by the loss of water content. We shall start with a basic question. How does the concrete plant operator know the proportion of material to make concrete? The answer is in past record. The operator will have the records of the past works. Even if you just started a concrete plant from scratch, you can still be able to get a mixed design because it is easily available. However, with or without a mixed design, you are still required to produce samples to be tested. We call it this trial mix. The plant will produce the concrete based on the submitted mix and use it to create samples, meaning test cube to be tested. How does this affect concrete shrinkage? I'm getting to it now. Let's go through the process. First, the concrete plant produces concrete. Concrete is then used to make cubes. They will stay there until the next day when they will be demolded and submerged in the water. This process is called curing. As you can see, the entire process has very little loss in water content. However, when concrete is delivered for actual use, there are lots of factors that will reduce water content. The steel reinforcement and conform surfaces absorb water. If pumps are used, then the inner surface of the pipes absorb water. Finally, water can evaporate. In summary, there is almost no water loss during the testing phase, but in actual work, water got removed from the concrete. This causes shrinkage cracks. Let's look at the solution. The book does not provide solution to this part, but it should be quite easily understood. In fact, it is pure common sense. First, put everything that concrete is in touch with. If they are already saturated with water, they will not be able to absorb water from concrete. Avoid casting in the noon. If possible, finally cover the completed surface to prevent evaporation. Many ways to do it. You can cover with plastic sheet, wet gunning stack, spray water, or use called curing compound. The objective is to prevent evaporation. Now let's look at the shrinkage caused by the difference in temperature. Let's start with basic facts. Cement is a paste that keeps everything stuck together. It reacts chemically with water to form a new material that is as strong as rocks. The reaction is called is exothermic, meaning a lot of heat is released. We call that the heat of hydration. Everything hot expands. So concrete that is heated by the heat of hydrogen expands in volume. That is not a problem until the concrete at the surface loses heat faster than those in the middle. As a result, cooler concrete at the surface starts to shrink while the hotter middle remains expanded. The brittleness of the concrete coupled with different expansion or shrinking rates will cause it to crack. The good news is this problem is only significant for really huge casting, usually applicable for casting of foundation structures which can be several meters deep. This is a computer simulation on the temperature difference in a single monolithic concrete structure. Red is hot, blue is cool, yellow and green are in between. The blue will shrink while the red remains expanded. By the time the red cools down, it too will shrink, but by the time its surroundings prevented it from doing so. This causes internal stress in the structure and will cause deep cracks. Now let's go to the solution of this problem. This time the book listed out the solutions but I've got to warn you this. 
Solution number 4 and 5 are wrong. I will explain later. Let's start with the first one. This is about solving problem, problem at its roots. Since the heat of hydration comes from the reaction between cement and water, the most obvious way is to cut down the cement content. We have confirmed experimentally that replacing a portion of cement with fly ash or ground blast furnace slag, we can get to still get the same strength and cut down the side effect like heat of hydration. The second is to choose what type of cement to use. Rapid hardening and finely ground cement causes high rate of reaction, which will result in high rate of heat being produced. Instead, use cement that reacts slower. This is common sense. If we know that heat is produced, why not use colder stones or water? I've never heard of cold aggregates, but I do know of people replacing part of water with crushed ice. Now we come to the part of textbook that answer which I think is strong. The book says use steel shattering and cool water spray. The word shattering means foam work. Why do the authors want to do that? The answer is they want to remove the heat of hydration. In my opinion, they are wrong. In fact, they, we should do the opposite. Do you know why? Recall the reason why the problem exists in the first place. The reaction between water and cement heats up the whole concrete. Temperature difference occurs because heat escapes at different rate. Crack happens. To solve this, we cut down the amount of heat as much as we can. After we have done all that and the heat is still big enough to matter, the next step is to prevent heat from escaping, from the surface from escaping. This will cut down the temperature difference. So in this case, insulate the formwork to keep we should insulate formwork to keep the temperature uniform. So the textbook is wrong. The next one. The book says remove formwork early. For the reasons given earlier, we should do the opposite. Keep heat. Keep the heat so that the temperature difference between the surface and inside to be minimal. Now we move to the third cause of shrinkage. Go back to basics again. Okay? Water reacts with cement to form a new material. We call this process concrete sets. As it sets, volume shrinks. Please note that this phenomenon, phenomenon has nothing to do with the heat of hydration mentioned earlier. This means the chem the ca after the chemical reaction, the new molecules occupy lesser space than the individual cement and water molecules. One benefit from this is that concrete will have a tighter grip to the steel. There should not be able there should not be any problems with this shrinkage unless the structure is restrained, meaning prevented from shrinking. This restraint will cause internal stress. This stress can be calculated. Let us start with the illustration of the predetermined form work shown here. We fill it with concrete. As the concrete sets, it shrinks. Let us call the shrinkage amount as epsilon CS. Before I move on, let me clarify this. The symbol epsilon refers to strain. Strain is the amount of shortening divided by the original length. Our objective here is to demarcate the change of length due to shrinkage. You will be able to see this clearly as I expand on this. You may also notice that I only focus on length alone. Let us move on. Suppose the concrete is reinforced. We will, we will see this. There will still be shrinkage, but it is lesser because steel provides partial restraint. Meanwhile, concrete will be stretched by this amount. We shall call it epsilon CT. There is a strain on the concrete. Next, we look at reinforce and restrain. The difference between this and the top one is labeled as epsilon SC. This is the amount of strain imposed on the steel. The steel is being compressed by the shrinkage of concrete. Now we are going to create an equation from this. 
if you look at all the epsilons in the picture, you will see that CS is the addition between CT and SC. Let us put all this into an equation like this. Now we are going to convert the strain into stress by using this formula. F is the stress and E is the modulus. Putting this into the equation, we will get epsilon CS equals to stress of concrete divided by its modulus plus stress of steel divided by its modulus. This is now the equation we are going to bring to the next page. This is the equation we formed earlier. We know that the net force inside the reinforced concrete is zero. This means the force produced by the steel must be equal to the force produced by the concrete. In this, equa in this equation, A is the cross-sectional area and F is the stress. The left-hand side is the force from the concrete and the ones on the right is the force from the steel. Now we isolate the concrete stress to the left-hand side. Then we plug in into the uh, equation in the red box here. What will you look like? Let's, let's go to the next page. The FCT has been replaced by a bunch of letters. Let us rearrange it to the following. Now we have the relationship between the strain of the concrete shrinkage on the left and on the right, we see the stress of the steel multiplied by a bunch of variables consisting of variable modulus of elasticity and cross-sectional area of both materials. We bring the equation to the top to further, for further development. If you look at the letters in the brackets, you see that the ES, which is the modulus of, modulus of elasticity, are consistent based on the material, the E, sorry. This means we can group the E's into a ratio like this and plug it back into the equation, we will see this. This time we can see the right, on the right hand side, the ratio of steel stress to its modulus multiplied by the bunch of stuff which is that's related to the cross-sectional areas. Bringing this up again, this equation gives us the definition of reinforced concrete strain in relationship, in relation with other variables. However, we are more interested in the stress imposed by the steel when it happens. So by moving the FSC to the left, we will get... This is the objective of this exercise. We now have a clear equation on the effect of concrete shrinkage to the steel. We are stopping at this point. In the next video, we will go through some examples.